everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is all right. Here's everybody. Hunters assemble. All right. It's more people coming in. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is early in the morning here in Mali. Good afternoon. And another time in, in other places. It's freaking me out. So <laughs> All right, well, we'll let everybody kind of assemble here. Um, good morning. Uh, I am uh, Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo, uh, usually in Burbank, but today coming from Maui. And um, this is um, our Get to Know VO series. Um, we will be doing these a third Wednesday of every month and focusing on a different aspect of um, a different aspect of voiceover from different angles and with different uh, resources to bring to bring to you. So the idea here is that we open awareness and give you an opportunity to ask questions, because one of the things that we really um, is part of our philosophy is the more the the more you know how to ask good questions, when you when you know how to ask a good question, ask good questions, you can always find good answers. So it's about this information, but it's also about um, how do you start thinking about things and how can you um, have some knowledge to be able to ask even more informed questions to get even better answers. So um, I'd like to introduce our um, well, first of all. Uh, um, well, our, our, our dojo team here, Jeffrey, is dojo team, so he's, uh, he's here to help and support everybody today. Um, and our guest is, um, uh, someone's sharing their screen, there we go. Um, <laughs> our guest is actually really part of the dojo family, um, our vocal health sensei, Faith Loomer. So Faith, thank you so much for being uh, here. Um, I've, I've been doing a, we've we had the 10 year event and we've had a couple of calls. So I've been doing my um, my beloved intro of Faith uh, a lot lately, but <laughs> Faith is absolutely remarkable. Um, she is multi-hyphenate in a way that only adds, uh, amplifies everything she does, not dissipates. So um, Faith is an amazing musician songwriter she is a musician singer songwriter she is a, a singing coach she's a vocal coach she is an a-list speech uh, a-list dialect specialist um she is a speech she has speech pathology background she's an acting teacher and a motivational coach as well so um yeah faith um is a good person to ask questions to <laughs> to get info and and ask questions to so Faith, welcome and thank you for being here. Thanks so much, Tish. Yeah. Um, and we were just we were just joking as we were coming on because we're both a little under the weather um, health-wise, which has a little bit of impact vocally. So um, you know the, the sweet iron the sweet irony of um, of being the the vocal professional and be an example of why why we all need to be here on this call today so yeah yeah um well well take it away faith tell, tell us a little bit about you tell us a little bit let's talk about let's talk about things okay um, so thanks tish um you know, tish and i are moving through our stuff together and this uh cold and all of this i've been coughing for about a week and all of that and you know there's all kinds of ways that i'm taking care of myself so i'm still working i'm able to sing i'm you know all of that so you can move through this stuff and i know tish is still working too so i'm going to start out with um, a little slide presentation we're just going to kind of talk about some things because i think it's a good way to open up i'm going to give you a lot of information that you can start to think about like uh, what's going on with your voice and what might be going on with your voice and how you can can keep it healthy and i think like tish said this is an opportunity to start thinking about questions and then um then we're going to open it up to the questions that this may have um, stimulated for you some of the ideas or even things that you just came with that you said she didn't answer that I need this answered right now okay. so uh, let me... one, one more thought that might bring us all into the room together as we begin yeah. 
Um, anyone else dealing with cold or, or voice stuff right now? Uh, either raise your hand or put it in the chat. So tell us what's going on. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. So cool, cool. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here with you. So welcome. Welcome. Let me move this over here. Okay. Welcome to the VO Dojo Voice Care Q&A. Um, I was, uh, this is my scary voice story. I wanted to share this with you so that you could, um, I might want to do that. Okay, good. Um, so that you could see what I went through. I was 19 years old and I began making my living as a singer and I certainly had the talent and the drive. I was out there singing five nights a week, four hours a night. That's a lot of singing. I was making really good money, living my dream as a singer, songwriter and a musician and everything was great until it wasn't. So here's what happened. I started to get hoarse and it got so bad that one day when I woke up in the morning, I could hardly get a sound out. Uh, eventually I needed to eventually I needed to see a doctor because my voice wasn't getting any better. Okay, let's see here. Yeah. Can you can see me? Is that true, everybody? Okay, great. Um, so the diagnosis was really devastating because I didn't know how to take care of my voice. I had developed vocal nodules and the doctor put me on vocal rest for four months, which is a lot of vocal rest, but that was a long time ago. Um, and But not only did I make my money singing, being a singer had become my identity. And you're gonna find that, that as you use your voice more and more, it is such a big part of your identity. So um, I vowed that I would never lose my voice again. So I got some great uh, vocal rehab from a wonderful voice teacher back in Chicago. This was back in Chicago when I lived there when it happened. And um, I studied voice with some great voice co coaches over the years. I've researched all kinds of vocal techniques. I've studied opera, musical theater, rock, pop, jazz, and voiceover technique. And then I also developed a voice for actors and voiceover course that allowed me to really delve into like the speaking voice. And then I started teaching at universities and performing arts colleges and top LA acting schools. Um, I earned my master's in speech pathology and voice therapy. And then I did my internship at LA County and USC Medical Center, where I diagnosed and rehabbed voice injured patients there. They have a wonderful voice lab there. And there are um, over the 25 years, I've coached many different professional voice users and vocal technique and helping them strengthen their voice and get it back when they have lost and overused it. And here are some of the professionals that I've worked with. Um, Marianne Cotillard, um, TV star Anna Giop, uh, Heather Graham, and then David Wenham, the film star. But I also work with all kinds of people um, throughout the years. Some of them are um, ministers and speakers and voiceover people. And um, here is one of my students, Akbar, Baja Biamila, uh, who has successfully hosted American Ninja Warrior since 2015. And we started working together right when he got that, right before he got that job. Um, and I've been coaching him through that. And now he's the co-host of the talk on CBS. And he really had to develop an expressive voice and also a super healthy voice because on American Ninja Warrior, they have to shout and just really get that, you know, that big voice and they film a lot of hours in a day. So we've worked on getting his stamina up, but also his expression, which then allowed him to be able to be hired as the co-host for the talk. So I learned what to do and what not to do. Um, and I, I just take, I, I do take a lot of chances with my voice. I sing all kinds of styles from rock, R&B, jazz, pop, and musical theater. I coach um, and speak all day long um, and my voice does get tired but it remains healthy and now I never lose my voice. I can't remember the last time I lost my voice. So when you need to use your voice in your work it becomes extremely important for your voice to stay healthy. You have to take care of it. If you don't you will eventually lose it. 
That's what happens. Even great singers like Julie Andrews, Adele, Stevie Wonder, Bono, the list here, Whitney Houston, Celine Dion, Elton John, they've all lost their voices from vocal abuse and overuse. And many of them have had surgery. Uh, most of them have had surgery. So that's really interesting. You really don't want to have to go down that route. And um, so let's see if we can look at how to keep your voice healthy. So here we go. I'm going to share with you my top voice care tips and then we'll discuss some of these things so the first thing is drink a lot of water and keep your voice hydrated especially in hot weather or during long rehearsals super important um, get plenty of sleep so you want to try to get seven to eight hours of sleep nothing rejuvenates your voice like a good night's sleep uh, you can suck on hard candies during the day. I would suggest using sugar-free candies with some glycerin in them and use a humidifier because it will keep your voice from drying out. It's a good investment um, for your home and your office, and they do make personal ones. I'll show you one that I like in just a second. And then rest your voice. So you want to take breaks when you rest your voice completely, especially if you're using your voice a lot during the day. So you just want to take those breaks, schedule them into your day. And then have a daily voice warm-up routine to keep your voice in shape. It's super important. Oh, I skipped um, keep physically healthy. I wonder why. Um, <laughs> because I haven't been doing that all week. Cardio worker workouts are super helpful. Um, so you do want to do that and if you want to develop good breathing and stamina. So here's one I want to, to want you to all take a look at to never clear your throat. And notice I said never clear your throat. I know it's a big ask. So every time you clear your throat, you bang your vocal cords together and it irritates them. And if you have allergies, clearing your throat irritates the throat in your body and it just creates more mucus to try and alleviate that irritation. So now you're in a cycle of clearing your throat, creating the mucus, clearing your throat, creating the mucus. So it's usually just a bad habit and you can break it. Take a sip of water instead. And there are a few other things that you can do instead of clearing your throat. Now here's some other ones. Um, make sure that you, if you smoke, I would suggest stop smoking. I know there are some really great singers and performers who smoke, but it's just not worth the risk for your voice or your health. You want to avoid dust, smoke, and toxic fumes. I suggest wear a mask if you have to be around dust. I even recommend wearing a mask when you deep clean your house or your garage. I always do that. Um, anytime I know I'm going to be, some dust is going to be um, coming up, I'm always going to put on my mask. So stop talking or singing when your voice feels hoarse or tired or sore or your throat feels tight or strained. Just stop using it. Don't think that you can power through it because it's not going to help. You want to stop yelling or screaming in your normal life. You're going to try not to yell. Um, and you want to, if you need to scream or or yell in a professional situation you want to make sure that you're using good techniques good technique and then rest your voice whenever possible so there are real techniques to um, learn how to yell or scream if you have to be on set or you're doing um, games and things like that and um, there are specific things that you can do okay so avoid or limit these foods and beverages so citrus because it has a lot of it'll irritate your throat. Um, so we don't want to drink citrus or really eat citrus before you have to speak or sing. A dairy, again, very mucus causing. Ice and water, um, you want to avoid that. You want to avoid spicy foods. And we can talk about, I'm sure you probably have some questions about these things, alcohol, tea, and caffeine. So we'll talk about all of those um, in the Q&A section, but I wanted to bring these up here. Now you want to start to understand what causes hoarseness. So if you're kind of experiencing some hoarseness, 
Acute laryngitis, usually the vocal cords are swollen due to a co common cold or some upper respiratory infection. This is not life-threatening, but it can mess with our work. So we want to be able to manage that. Uh, a vocal abuse, screaming, very loud talking, or trying to sing out of your range is going to also cause hoarseness. Now, if you're straining to hit high notes when you sing, you should find a good vocal coach to help you. You can increase your range with good technique and hit those high notes with confidence and ease. But if you um, if you're working with a vocal coach and and you're feeling your voice is very tired after working with them, you might want to ask them what's going on or look for a different coach because that shouldn't be happening. Okay. And vocal nodules. Um, if you don't know what vocal nodules are, they're calluses on the vocal cords that form from prolonged vocal abuse. And most of the time that they'll go away um, if you get vo voice rest and voice therapy, that's what's recommended. But surgery can be also recommended. It's always risky. It's your last resort. Um, Julie Andrews lost her voice completely because she had surgery um, due to not trying to get rid of nodules. Um, and she can't sing like she used to sing, which is really, you know, um, a tragedy, I think. Vocal polyps are growths on the vocal cords that form from prolonged, prolonged vocal use, and they usually must be removed by surgery. Now, reflux disease is also can cause hoarseness. And what reflux disease is, it's stomach acid that comes up through the esophagus and irritates the vocal cords. And then the cords become swollen and your voice becomes hoarse. So changing your diet can make a really big difference in relieving your reflux symptoms and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second uh smoking um we talked about that besides the it's the obvious health risk it's going to cut off your high notes when you're a singer it swells the vocal cords allergies if you have them the vote the nasal drip into the throat can cause swelling of the vocal cords and we can talk about what you can do about that in our q a um, cancer will also cause hoarseness so if you have prolonged hoarseness it should always be checked out by a doctor i'm talking about cancer of the throat um, it's you it can be caused by a cancerous growth on your vocal folds and also can be obviously life-threatening so how to protect your voice from getting hoarse? Well, the first obvious answer, and people don't really look at this, but it's really the first one, get really good vocal training. Get the best vocal coach you can find. And don't wait until you're having problems to get your lessons. You want to be preventative here. This is your voice, your only voice. I already say this, so you want to invest in yourself. Make sure that your vocal coach is supportive, supportive and knowledgeable and help you get the results that you really want. Okay, always warm up your voice. Whenever you need to use your voice professionally, make sure that you warm up your voice for at least 10 minutes, no exceptions. Um, if you make this your rule, you're going to find out that it just becomes something that you do and you're going to feel really good about it. And um, you know, you'll just do it all every single time. You know, 10 minutes is not a long time. Use an amplifier when speaking to a large group or over noise that you really want um, then you really want to use an amplifier or a PA. Uh, for singers, make sure that your PA system is adequate and that you have a good monitoring system. If you can't hear yourself, you're going to push your voice too hard and then you could get hoarse. So when you have a cold, let's talk about that, which is what Tish and I are battling right now. So um, you want to rest your voice. Your vocal cords are probably swollen, usually due to nasal drip. So get as much voice rest as you can. Go to Hawaii, go to Maui, <laughs> have some fun. <coughs> Drink plenty of fluids and inhale steam throughout the day. This is my favorite personal steamer. You can per, um, easily travel with it or take it backstage. You can get it online, but there's other ones like this. So you can take a look at these on Amazon. They just fit right over your mouth and your nose and will um, human, you know, hum, help to um, steam and humidify your voice. Get that moisture back into your voice. So you want to warm up your voice gently. This is what Tish and I were going to be talking about, right? Um, humming lightly or vocalizing lightly. So if we were kind of went, hmm, hmm, 
Notice I went from a high to a low. So instead of going, mmm, because you can see that's causing some it's kind of strain. Yeah, try that, Tish. Go from a high to a low. Yeah, and lightly on your high one. Mm, fill it up in your nose and your mouth. Yeah, that's great. Just yeah. let it drop though, right? Not make it go anywhere. Yeah, just let it drop. Mm. And keep it in your mask as you're going lower. Mm. There you go. And then feel that opening up by sinuses too. Yeah, it's a really easy thing to do um, in the morning in your shower. You know, you can do that or before you have to talk when you've got that cold. Um, and then avoid alcohol and caffeine because they're going to dehydrate you. So not a great thing, you know, because your vocal cords are already swollen a little bit. Um, don't whisper. You know, this is one that people don't understand. It's very hard on your throat to whisper. So you don't want to whisper like that. But you can do a, a voiced whisper. So I could do this. So that could be okay. Try to limit your coughing, even though decongestants are really not good for your voice. Coughing is harder on it. So you might want to look at those times if you had to speak, taking a decongestant. I did that this morning so that I could not cough through this presentation. Um, use a saline nasal spray. And my favorite is called Exlear. It has saline, water, glycerin, and grapefruit seed extract in it and I find it magical super 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 magical um, so you can look at that now uh, when you do have a cold you want to look at some natural vocal remedies and we'll put this in the chat but this is um, one place that Tish and I love it's the mailbox to lukealake.com it's products for the professional vocalist but you want to make sure that you read the label of each of your vocal care products before because even on natural vocal remedies um, you know in, in a place like this you might find some that aren't that great um, for you that have things in it that you really don't want to um, you want to limit so a, ingredients that you might want to avoid so take a look at these sugar glucose syrup sucrose I look at sometimes some of the um, lozenges even on natural care sites they'll have do stuff you have, do you have another slide Faith or are we following along about what Oh, the list do you, is oh, the you list know what I did I took that out so I'm going to you know I could put it in oh no worries no worries I just wasn't sure if, if yeah, yeah. Just, so sugar yeah. glucose sugar, caffeine sometimes you'll find that in these things right um menthol because you think oh menthol is great but that can also um um it can anesthetize your throat. So if you have to speak, and that's not a good thing. Um, peppermint oil, some people are allergic to peppermint oil. So you wanna take a look at that. And if you have, um, if you have um, reflux, peppermint is not good. So you wanna take a look at that. So, and then anything that you might be personally allergic to. So those are the sugar, caffeine, menthol, peppermint oil, because you might be allergic to it. Um, and anything else that you are allergic to, and also peppermint with the reflux. Okay, so I wanted to let you all know that, you know, what you kind of, we all have these questions, when should we go see a doctor? When should we not go see a doctor? Which doctor should we see? If you go see an ENT, it can be rather expensive, even on healthcare. Um, so you want to make sure that, that you if you just need to see your general practitioner that these are probably the times you want to do that so well, that can you, you don't see what an ENT is Faith and uh, don't an, know an ENT is an ear nose and throat doctor um, they're also called um, um, a laryngologist which is another type of doctor but an ENT is an ear nose and throat specialist mm -hmm. so they're usually um, also um, they also usually do surgery as well and we have a couple that we love that are, you know, really good specializing in voice. So your general practitioner, if you just get sick from a cold or a flu and you have an important speech or performance coming up, you might want to, you know, get on the phone or get to see your doctor and say, what can I do? You know, give me some things to do here. Um, if you've been sick for a week or more, it's not getting any better. You can go see your general practitioner. 
If you have chronic heartburn or you feel an acidic burning sensation in your throat and you're a little hoarse, that might be a sign of reflux and your general practitioner is the first place to go with that. And of course, if you have allergies that are constantly causing you to be hoarse, your doctor can help you with that. Now, your ENT or a laryngologist, here's when you want to really look at this. Um, you lost your voice and you have an important speech or performance like tomorrow, tonight. You know, it's like the show must go on. Right? I've had plenty of people who go, you know, I don't know what to do. I got I've got, you know, you're 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 in a stage show and you got to go on tonight. So what do you do? You call your laryngologist, your ENT. Um, if you often get hoarse using your voice and it's hard to recover it, I would schedule an appointment with an ENT and find out what's going on get that examination. If you can't hit your high notes anymore, your head tone is breathier than usual, or your voice just starts cutting out on you, you know, these again um, are, are things that could be a um, sign of really, you know, severe voice problems. And you want to take a look at that. If you've been hoarse for more than three weeks and you're not sick, definitely go see your ENT. Okay. Um, if you have pain in your throat, that's not from a cold or a flu. If you're coughing up blood, you have difficulty swallowing. You have a lump in your neck or sores in your mouth that don't heal, especially if you're a smoker. These are signs that you definitely want to go see your ENT. Um, you know, I had um, a client a long time ago, um, not that, well, it was a while ago, and she was coughing up blood and she went to go see her doctor, her regular doctor, and they said, I think you just have you know, a nose, you know, you're, you're, you have a bloody nose and it's draining down in your throat. That's what's going on. And she came back to me and she was hoarse and all of this. And I said, I don't think I'm, I'm a little worried about this. I want you to schedule an appointment with your ENT. And it turned out she had a vocal hemorrhage, right? So, you know, that's why you don't know. And you want to kind of take a look at that. Um, again, this is your only voice. We really want to take care of it. And it's important that we do that. Okay, so here's some management of um, gastroesophageal reflux disease or reflux and avoid foods that aggravate your reflux. Okay, so these are some of the things that do aggravate your reflux, spicy foods, acidic foods like citrus and tomatoes, greasy or fatty foods, chocolate. Oh my God, not chocolate. <laughs> Peppermint, um, caffeine and carbonated beverages and alcohol. So you want to start avoiding these if you are experiencing reflux. And then there's some other things we can talk about in the Q&A if some people have some questions about this, about um, how you can manage your reflux. And um, you can visit my coaching website that's going to be also in the website to learn more about how you can work with me if you have some other questions about this. And I think this is we're ready to start some questions. Hey, excellent. Well, thank you for all those insights. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a big download of information. Um, it was, I know. Excellent. It's but it's good. It's good to set, set up like how, how to be thinking about things. So um, what questions does everyone have? Do we have some queued up, Jeffrey? Yeah, I've got one from Kimberly Gale Thomas. Uh, so Kimberly, if you'd like to unmute yourself, uh, go right ahead. Yeah, and everyone write your questions in the chat and then we'll call you up to share your voice in the room. Okay. Uh, yeah, so um, there's like some things that are a no-no, but I was just curious um, if there's like a time period just not to have them versus not having them at all. I, you know, you cut out a little bit, Kimberly, in the beginning. I wasn't sure what you just said. The, I think her question is it's the time frame. So you, so is is the game not to not to do these things at all, or if you have a session, not to do these <coughs> things before a certain amount of time? Yeah, that's a great question. So. Um, I have found certain things and you're going to find it in your own body. You want to start doing these things, you know, checking it out. Um, so before I would have to um, speak um, or sing or, you know, do something where I really have to use my voice, uh, which is almost every day, but uh, I would not eat spicy foods the night before. I would not eat spicy foods um, 
the morning before or especially 10 minutes you know before or 30 minutes before um, spicy foods really can um, shut down your vocal mechanism because it irritates your membranes and then you know you're going to be getting some extra mucus and also some irritation so that's that would be my recommendation for that make sure that you warm up your your voice um you know that 10 minute warm up before you have to speak and do if you're in the if you're in the booth you know make sure that you do that um cool down is great after mm-hmm. after you're in the booth um and then you can and cool down kind of looks a little bit like warm up you know it's again a bit like that kind of like you know like there's all these tiny little like things you want to do you want to lighten up your voice because it's probably gotten heavy from the work i think i think the real question is how long not to have coffee before a session is that yes. is that for it everybody that's a, that's a big, <laughs> big big thing right i got gotcha. I think that's really really what's on everyone's mind oh my gosh <laughs> <And milk. laughs> i know so it's going to vary depending on the person but here's what i've started to discover that if i drink coffee within two hours or three hours of singing speaking it affects me Mm -hmm. i have a cup of coffee in the morning i'm trying not to have more during the day um i've talked to another client that said that when we talked about this that he totally cut coffee out of his um he's a voiceover uh, artist totally Mm -hmm. cut coffee out of his um routine and his voice changed so much Mm -hmm. it it was such a big difference for him so i know that that's we have to all kind of look at that but it the caffeine really does affect your throat but coffee also is very acidic and Mm -hmm. that's that's also what's going on with it and Go ahead, Tish, you had a oh, I was just going to say, sometimes I think it helps to know, like we, we all know we shouldn't, but sometimes it helps to know why. So it affects yeah. the voice, but how, uh, so you just explained the acidity, but how does caffeine affect your vocal cords? Like, does it make them tighten? Does it make them go faster? Does it make That's them- That's really interesting. Okay, so um, they've done studies on this and um, what they found is that caffeine Um, causes what they call jitter in the vocal cords. And so in your vocal cords, they're supposed to uh, vibrate at a very even pace. So if I sing, let's say, um, middle C, like, uh, that's probably middle C, close to it. Mm -hmm. My vocal cords are vibrating 265 times a second, and they should be vibrating very evenly. But coffee makes them vibrate like unevenly so it's Hmm. so the frequency is not um not um consistent and it's and you're causing that so that would change something in the vocal folds um i i also find that it for my voice it makes it heavier Hmm, interesting Interesting. yeah and then when i try to go higher in my range it tends to kind of because they're a little heavier it makes it harder to get up into that higher range to be more pristine and maybe that's the jitter that's causing that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. excellent does that answer your question Kimberly I I still have others because now I'm because it seems like it's not the same time period for the same thing it seems to be that like maybe like you're saying um, I think it was like the night before so I'm thinking that it's eight hours but then other things are like 10 minutes so it seems to yeah Yeah. and you're going to have to Kimberly what I would suggest is you want to kind of start on your own body start noticing these things so I'm going to try oh I just ate spicy foods the night before um or this morning how did it affect my voice I drank coffee you know um and then cut it out and see how it affects your voice so that's the best thing everybody has a little bit of difference but i think that anything that is going to shut your voice down which we went through a list you want to make sure you're not doing that two to three hours before you have to use your voice because mm-hmm. you're go ahead what was kimberly and why is peppermint because as a tea drinker i sometimes use that as my sugar yeah so peppermint is um some people peppermint is bad if you have um um acid reflux So that's why if you don't have acid reflux, it's not going to be bad for you. I drink peppermint tea. Now, let me tell you about tea. So tea will dry you out. 
Okay, so tea, it, all kinds of tea, it doesn't matter whether it's herbal or whatever, it's going to dry you, dry you out. So if you drink herbal tea, you can feel like afterwards, you kind of go, you're going to feel this sort of tasting, like it's very dry in your mouth, kind of like you take a decongestant. Um, so tea, if it has um, slippery elm in it, that's good, because that will help you. Um, to well any kind of like so throat coat tea is really good um, but your regular teas you don't want to drink those teas while you're doing your voiceover work and what about seltzer water uh, yeah so anything that has carbonation um, is um, you know it's kind of going to just going to keep burping up so that's not a good idea for speaking or, or doing your voiceover work at all either so what would you suggest to something that can be drunk throughout the day throughout the year whether there's a session or not yeah now i drink i drink um i'll drink i'll drink tea i drink tea at nighttime i do i you know i like to do that i just don't do it when i have to work okay yeah you know i i drink coffee first thing in the morning i haven't been able to figure that one out yet um but i'm trying to limit it during the day because i work all day long and it's made a difference in my voice um i um, I eat spicy food sometimes, but I would never do it before a performance or before I have to work. Um, so does that help you? I mean, you want to look at those kinds of things. Um, yeah. Thank you. Well, excellent. That was a great, great slew of, of, of really good focused questions, uh, Kimberly. What, uh, what other questions do you have, Jeffrey? Uh, I've got a, a slew from Alana Rosen. I uh, had a couple of good ones. So Alana, come on up. Yeah, sorry, I'm a question machine. Um, I know my, um, I think my first question was, can ENTs check on just general vocal health? Like if I just go into an ENT and ask like, hey, how do my vocal cords look? Because I know I have a lot of um, health problems in general and gastric problems and stuff and like I have reflux that they can't even fix oh. so I um that's one of the things that I wonder is if I can get that checked just to make sure you know I still have vocal cords as it were yeah you know I would suggest as a professional voice user that we all go in and get our voice checked out you know um, um I've done that before just to go in to say you know can you just I always want to check and make sure everything is good um they can um they can just take a look at your vocal cords. They don't have to scope you in that kind of situation. Uh, scoping would be, you know, that means that when they scope you, they put a fiber optic tube down your throat with a little camera on it, and then they look at your vocal folds. They will do that if there's some base, some problems because they need to make sure, you know, get a better look at it. But an ENT can just kind of put a mirror down the back of your throat and take a look at your vocal folds and see what's going on and, and see if they look healthy. Um, they will tell you if they think they need to scope you after that. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I just did, I just did that. Uh, just got a baseline. I was having a little bit of acid reflux. I called Faith, and, and so I just did. I did that with Dr. Gupta in Beverly Hills. So it's not inexpensive, but it, it felt to me like um, like getting a mammogram or a colonoscopy of just like having a baseline to know where things were. Luckily, everything was okay. I think the other thing is um, good EMTs are often um, not easy to get into on a, in, a, um, in an instant. So if you have, uh, if you go and do that and get a baseline, you're in their system as a, as a patient. So if and when something does happen, then you have that working relationship. So that's great advice. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and um, my uh, you answered the club soda question, but um, I also wondered with thumbs, do those affect the vocal cords at all to help with the reflux? That's a question I don't know the answer to that one. You know, I think um, um, I think thumbs are pretty benign. I don't think they're really you know talk to your doctor about that. They would be the best person to know that. Um, you know, that's, uh, but I would imagine that's, it's pretty benign. Um, I don't think it affects your vocal cords. It's certain, it might help with your acid reflux. Okay. Cool. Thanks. 
All righty. Um, our next one is from Angelita Esperanza. Hello. Hi. Um, wanted to ask about vocal coaching. Do we need separate ones for singing and voice and speech, or is it one for both? What would you recommend? I recommend that um, that uh, if you you want to go to someone who knows what they're doing about each one, right? Now I coach both because I do speech and I have that training, but I also have a lot of singing training. So I coach both, but not every singing teacher is a great voice for speech training. And certainly not many, many um, speech trainers are not good singing coaches because they don't sing, you know, or they don't specialize in that. So I would say, um, you know, look at, uh, if you find someone like myself who can do both, then you got, you know, one, sh one stop shop kind of thing that can be good and you can be managed through both of those. That's a, probably the ideal situation if you're a singer and a voice user. Um, but uh, otherwise, I would say um, really look at their credentials, look at what they're doing, interview them, talk to them, see who they're, you know, who they're working with. And um, Faith, I think we were talking about this on another call recently. Um, but can you articulate what is the difference? I think particularly since this is a voiceover based call, and I think that a lot, I think personally, I think every singer should be doing voiceover. You're kind of crazy if you're not, because you know your instrument so well. Um, however, how we use the instrument is a little bit different. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between, um, the difference vocally between yeah singing like what a singing coach would do and what a, a vocal coach would do yeah. singing and speaking voice can you articulate a little bit about sure that? i'll try to uh, do, do it in a short little version of this um so for singing we we sing with a much bigger range obviously than we do for speaking so you have to be able to go through all these different kinds of ranges in your voice and different um uh, different registers in your voice now for speaking we normally stay in one register it's the what i call the um the um it's a, the heavy adjustment of the vocal cords. As you go up into your head tone, you're going to get the light adjustment of your vocal cords. And so um, you have to, um, for singing, you're going to have to be able to go through all of those registers. For speaking, um, and you warm up a little differently because of that. Also singing, we tend to, we need to hold a note out for a very long time, right? So our support system is a little bit different. We need it to be very very, you know, like solid. And if you're speaking with too much of a solid, say, you know, um, voice, like support system, like I am right now, it sounds a little bit fake, doesn't it? Right? <laughs> it's not good. So we need to be able to loosen that up and still feel support and be able to use our voice. So sometimes what happens when you study singing and you try to uh, take that into your speaking and you and you don't really know the difference, you can kind of, your support system might be too heavy almost. Um, and also you're speaking, probably gonna try to be speaking too loudly, pushing too much air into your throat. Mm -hmm. Did that yeah. help? That's kind oh. of a short, a little short. Um, yeah. I think even just opening up the idea that it's two separate things is, is uh, important. Yeah. yeah. The warm up is different. Um, and um, yeah, I do, I do two different warm ups for my singing and my speaking. Oh, which I think segues to the next question, right, Jeffrey? Thank you. Yeah, it absolutely does. Um, well, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get uh, Rashmi's in here and then we'll, we'll double back. So Rashmi, uh, go right ahead and come on in. Hi, hi, Faith. Um, I, I want, I one, one of my questions was about tea, which you already answered, because uh, I'm a tea drinker. <clears throat> and then the second one uh, is about the 10 minute warm up. Is that on your website or is that something? It's, it's not on my website. Um, um, it is something available if you want. Um, I, I have a, a 15 minute warm up that is um, the, for all the VO Dojo um, people who are in the program with Tish, they get access to the 15 minute vocal warm up. Um, so that is, it's, you know, it's 15 minutes. It's not long. Um, it's six steps. Um, basically, you want to warm up, and in, in this is what you want to warm up. I'll give it to you right here. You want to warm up your um, some kind of um, relaxation or stretching that really stretches out 
um, not just a yoga stretch, but a stretch that stretches out your speaking mechanism. Um, then you want to look at um, the next thing is working on your breathing. So you want to make sure that your breathing is centered and you're working on that. You want to connect your breathing to your diaphragm and your you connect your voice to your breathing. So it's not just working out the breathing, but then connecting the voice to the to the to the breathing mechanism, the support system. I mean, you want to make sure that you're in alignment, so that you're not that your your spine and your whole skeletal system is really supporting. I know. Look at how we just did that. We all just kind of went, oh, let me remind myself. <laughs> right? And then we want to make sure that we are opening our resonating chambers. So we have different resonating chambers. You want to open up all of those. And then you want to do some articulation. So some articulation exercises. And unfortunately, um, tongue twisters are not the best or not the greatest thing to do because they're not um, focused on the different articulators. It's important. It's kind of like, you know, when you, a, a ballet dancer goes to the ballet bar, they focus on really different specific parts of their body so that it works together in articulating what they need to articulate. So if you're doing tongue twisters, you're already in the dance, right? You haven't really broken it down. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's a cool way of thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Not that they can't be helpful, but that's not where you start. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you. Cool. Excellent. What's next, Jeffrey? All right. Then we have Ethan James Lynch. EJL, take it Hello. away. Uh, so it's wonderful to meet you, Faith. I'm a member of the dojo and I am also a trained singer. Um, and one of those things, the reason I bring that up is because I sometimes have a lot of jaw tension. And sometimes, like yesterday, I was noticing that it was impacting some of my uh, consonants, like and um, sounds. I couldn't say union sometimes until I re like you know tried to put my jaw back into place. And I'm wondering, do you have any exercises or ideas to help stretch out the jaw? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Um, you first of all go into the dojo when you get your. Um, in the in the workout in the warm up and in the warm up there's some things to um, stretch your jaw out a little bit start with start there okay you want to do that do you have tmj or um yes yes i do on one side okay oh on one side okay um so, tmj for people who might not be aware of what it is it's it's short for temporal mandibular joint dysfunction that's the that yeah, that's what it is and it's your it's your joint right here between your, um, you know, your where your upper and lower jaw come together. Basically, that's the TM. That's your temporal mandibular joint, right? So what happens is this gets um, tight. And it gets the muscles here get tight. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things to look at. Um, it's uh, Ethan, right? Yes. Yeah. A couple of things to look at, Ethan, is you want to. Um, First of all, you, you can massage lightly, right? Never do, never do, never move your jaw around like crazy. That's not good for it. Very, very, very gentle, especially if you have TMJ. Um, and one of the things I would suggest is just take, and I'm going to give you my, like, this is like the, the, the million dollar fix for this. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, you want to take this part of your hand right here, mm -hmm. right? Put it on your chin. And then lightly let your chin come down like this. Now you don't want to drop it down too low. See how it's off the hinge? Now take your tongue, put it by the bottom teeth, and pant slowly. Do you feel your jaw relaxing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ethan, that would be good for you to do during the day. Um, what you're trying to do is you're trying to uh, let these muscles relax. It's like rehab. You know, when you do rehab for a, a, a hurt muscle or a tight muscle, they are always releasing it, releasing it. So you want to release that. So how did that feel? Pretty good? Yeah, it felt very good. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's one of the places that we don't understand how much tension, how much tension oh we carry gosh. there. It and really then, restricts. And then it's interesting just to see, just doing that one little thing suddenly released everything. 
like my voice is in a different place. Isn't it I'm fantastic? Doing, like, 10 seconds. Yeah. Magical. Wow. That's, that's my, that's part of the magic. I have all these like magical things. That's one of my most favorite magical yeah. fixes. Oh. I love, I love that it really is just understanding what it is and then just being able to bring your awareness in that littlest, littlest yeah. way. That's yeah. Yep. 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 Um, we have, um, just as a really interesting aside, the vagus nerve is the largest nerve in your body. And it, um, it, it starts in your head. It's a, it's a cranial nerve. Um, it's your 12th cranial nerve. No, not the 12th, 10th cranial nerve. And it comes down, um, innervates your vocal cord. So it's responsible for um, innervating the nerves. So it makes the nerves fire. So that that's what it does. It comes down around your heart, around your stomach. It's like it innervates all of this stuff. It's like regulating all of this stuff. And it's your fight or flight nerve. So when oh. is it's amazing, isn't it? Um, it's called the vagus nerve. And when it's activated, we're in sort of this like fight or flight kind of thing. Um, and when it's inactivated, we're in the calm thing. So to activate, to inactivate the vagus nerve is that idea of putting your tongue by the bottom teeth and panting will inactivate the vagus nerve. That's why you felt so relaxed. Wow. Well, that, now, okay, keep on going. Um, now, if you put your tongue on the roof of the mouth and press it on the roof of the mouth, it's going to activate it. You feel how your body's starting to get like revved up a little bit? Well, it's like brakes. Yeah. It's like brakes and accelerator. Yeah. yeah that's a great way of putting it. A brake and an accelerator, right? Whoa. So this is a whole nother workshop, you guys, because that <laughs> exploded in my brain. But, uh, but the, the thing that it makes me think of, Faith, is what you just articulated is the, the vagus nerve goes from your brain, through your throat, around your heart, down into Stop your it. butt. But that's like everything that we do at the dojo. Like, how do we integrate all of those things? It's not just from your brain. It's not just the sound of. It's how you feel and what you know. Yeah. And, and, how do we, and, and then the flight or flight, you know, so much of, so much of the work that we do here on the internal training um uh is you know dealing with your inner critic and stuff and right your inner critic is always like yeah, let's get out of here stop that don't do that that's stupid right like let's get out of here but um it's a very nervous reaction um so that's that's kind of cool to think yeah again how integrated your voice is with everything um i think sometimes we think of it separately oh the voice the voice it's like mm, no, it's, all, it's all connected you know we're physically that's the way we're wired you know and so mm -hmm. um i th that's just what that's a really two, i gave you like two really amazing magical things right there and i think they're all both oh, great. Oh. okay i think we have a few more minutes um what what other questions do we have well, I get, um, while I gather my brains back in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's it's so interesting that when the two of you first came on and all three of us were setting up, there was, you know, your voices are so much more clearer and stronger than that. You've had a chance to warm them up and just the little bit of exercises we've done. So, yeah, you know. yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Jason Lachea had to step out for a second. So if He's not in the room. I'll ask his questions for him because they were pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, in, uh, making sounds while inhaling for like creatures or monster sounds. Um, is that pros and cons, damaging to the voice? Um, I don't know that it's damaging. I think that it's, it's going to wear your voice out. I mean, not, it'll dry your voice out probably a little bit. So you wanna make sure you have a lot of water. It depends on how you're doing it. Um, when we create any kind of big like monster sounds or if you're singing, you want that growl in your voice, you can do it, um, but you gotta be able to do it in a way. And I teach us something, I really teach everybody about how to how to create those different sounds so you don't hurt your voice. Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, yeah. I mean, in my day I've sung opera, I've sung Led Zeppelin, I've sung all kinds of stuff like where it's crazy, you know, where I can growl and do all kinds of things um uh so it's possible without hurting your voice 
Awesome, and thanks. Oh, any, go ahead, other, any other like boom, boom, boom questions that we, there, can, we can finish up on? There are. Uh, steamer versus nebulizer. Is one better than the other? I'm not sure the nebulizer. Um, I don't have one of those, so I'm not sure what a nebulizer is. Um, and vocal mist, have vocal mist, but wonder if I should get a steamer as well to complement that. Is there such a thing as too much? Well, I think, you know, I, the one the reason I like the, the personal one is that I'm not then humidifying my entire room. Mm -hmm. I think it's also cooler. I think sometimes the hot can sometimes feel a little overwhelming. Um, um, the personal new humidifiers seem to be a little cooler air. I, I guess there's, it's, you know, again, that's personal. You can kind of see, um, you know, uh, you can always go to the extreme of things and then kind of get the opposite reaction. So I don't think you probably need more than a personal steamer. Yeah, cool. Good, good. cool. Um, <laughs> and then um, way to build up muscles for stamina. That would be part of the warm up, um, a, a consistent warm up routine, I would imagine. Yeah, and I also think having some kind of aerobics that you do, whether it's walking or running or, you know, or some kind of thing helps to build up your, your, you know, swimming would be great for your lungs as well. I can attest to that for sure. Yeah, that was Alana. So it, obviously seeing a, a coach to get that routine established, practice perfect sort of routine would be great. And then the consistency of keeping up with that routine is up to the Absolutely. individual. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that that is it for, oh, um, Adam Clark really quick had one about uh, decaf coffee, almond milk, and stevia. Is that a, is that a, is, as min, is that minimalizing or still should just be a, <laughs> I think it's probably minimalizing everything that you would, you know, that would be bad for you. Um, the, the decaf will still have a little bit of the acidic to it because that's the nature of coffee. So mm. you want to take a look at that. Um, uh, but you don't have the effects of the caffeine. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying that anything acidic is not positive, um, is creating an alkaline, uh, alkaline version of to to promote alkaline helpful or is it just avoiding oh, it that's a really great question that i don't know you know i think i would look at a consult a nutritionist about that and see how it affects your body but it's a great question i'll have to look into that um yeah, yeah the, the reason that you know citrus it's it's it just irritates you you know you can take you know you can tell after you drink some you know you right. can feel irritation in your throat so again you know not before a couple hours before you really want to you know not do that mm -hmm. that's why you can't have grapefruit or you can't you know i don't you know that's not true yeah well, this is great well guys we're coming to the end um what, what i'd love you guys each to do is um whenever we come together at the dojo we finish up um with what we call a dojo o um which is just sharing choosing one thing of all the things that we covered today um, what was one thing that made you go, oh, or, oh, or, oh, <laughs> like, I think there's a lot of, oh, no coffee, oh, um, but what, what was one thing that you'll take away and see how, if you can distill it into its most essential form and just uh, put that in the chat. Um, and then, um, we are going to be, well, let's see, uh, we're going to be doing something, uh, get to know VO every other Wednesday each month. So you can put it on your calendar that something will be going on here. Um, different subjects uh, that, that pertain to uh, um, next month, I think, uh, get to know VO is our, um, one of our favorite events, which is called the Demo Lesson Derby with our demo producers. Um, Brittany Cox and Ryan Ricks from Next Level Voice Demos. Um, but basically send in your demos and we run them through a gauntlet and just go un unpack the whole process of what, ha what, is, what happens on a demo, what makes a good demo, and a little bit of reflection on how yours stands, stands up in, in real, real time. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a little, it's a little, um, it's a little, uh, it, it's, it's, it's straight, it's straightforward and it's also very nurturing and, um, a, a great opportunity. Um, so that's coming up next month. Um, we have our VO Dojo Pro Fight Clubs every month, three times a month, a working pro workout brings together top-notch talent with the decision makers who hire us. 
um, to participate, you need to have a demo rep and booking um, and everyone can be a spectator. So um, we have, um, Jeffrey, remind me who's coming up on Sunday. Um, it's uh, ADR dubbing for live. live uh, yeah, that's Carrie Karanen. Yeah, Carrie Karanen. Karanen. Mm -hmm. on, on Sunday, is that right? Sunday, March 20th. And then we, we have Brittany Lauda for anime on Tuesday, March 22nd. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think the, there might be a few player spots you can get on a waiting list, if not, and uh, really encourage you to, to take the spectators. And if you want to know anything more about the dojo, um, you can uh, sign up for a voiceover once over, talk to Jeffrey, um, and we can find you, you know, talk about where you are and where you'd like to be. And Faith, how, how do people best keep in touch with you? I mean, obviously, if you're in the dojo program, you're part of it, but um, how can they best keep in touch with you? Uh, yeah, so you can reach me, uh, Faith at the Artist First. I think Jeffrey did put that link in there, so that thank you. You can take a look at the chat. And um, my website is theartistfirst.com, and you can always take a look there. Um, and uh, email me, you know, if you you know want if you have some questions, or uh, I'll see what I can do. Um, and then go to the website and take a look at that and see what how I can help you in many many different different ways. So yeah. Yeah, um, great to see everybody here. I um, hope you got a lot out of it. Um, and we look forward to, to seeing you again. And, you know, we're, we're always here to help with whatever questions that you have. And hopefully this has allowed you to go forth with more informed questions to ask next. So, all right, guys. Well, uh, anything else I've missed, Jeffrey? I think I think you that. covered it all. All right. Great, great, great. All right, my dears. Well, have great days. Take good care of your voices. And we will see you. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Bye.